Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It's Tuesday, and that means it's time to recap another classic comic book. Today's selection is from the early Silver Age, 1958 to be exact, and it contains the first appearance of one of Superman's most formidable enemies, Brainiac. Writer Otto Binder and artist Al Plastino created the character for this July issue, and after reading the book again after all these years, it is clear they were attempting to introduce a villain who could not only match the Man of Steel, but best him in almost every way. And that is the legacy of Brainiac. Sure, Lex Luthor is the Superman rival. There's no question about that. He is Superman's polar opposite in every way. But Brainiac is a character that not only exceeds Luthor's maniacal genius in terms of science and technology, but he is also as, if not more, resilient physically than our favorite Kryptonian. And this is how he started out. Sure, there were evolutions in his backstory, but the first appearance of Brainiac gave us a preview of what was to come in the following decades. Issue number 242 of Action Comics begins with Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and other members of the press on board the first ever experimental rocket designed by the U.S. Army to transport people into space. Soon into their flight, as they break into the outer atmosphere, a flying saucer appears. Superman, still disguised as Clark Kent, uses his X-ray vision and enhanced hearing to observe the occupants of the mysterious craft. Inside is an alien who calls himself Brainiac with his pet Coco, and Brainiac believes that the rocket is there to attempt to stop his plans. Clark realizes that he needs to change into his alter ego, so to avoid suspicion, as Clark Kent, he uses a spacesuit with a jetpack to exit the army rocket, as if he was fleeing in fear, which is what Lois herself believes. Changing behind an asteroid, Superman flies towards the flying saucer, only to be bounced off from an invisible force field. Deciding to change tactics, Superman pushes the Earth rocket out of the way of the saucer's destructive ray and towards a safer orbit. It is this moment of delay that Brainiac puts into motion his plan. He prepares glass bottles on a shelf and uses what he calls a hyper bomb site. His ship's instruments focus on the city of Paris, and in a push of a button, the city disappears from Earth, confounding the pilots of a passing airliner. But the city of Paris was not destroyed. It was teleported and shrunk into miniature form, coming to rest inside of one of Brainiac's bottles. Why do this? So he can repopulate his homeworld and rule over the new citizens like a god as he had before. Superman watches helplessly as Brainiac steals the cities of Rome, New York, and London. Brainiac takes the time to examine each miniature, explaining to Coco how he is providing them oxygen, and then decides to more closely examine a bridge in New York City. Being careless, Brainiac destroys the Brooklyn Bridge, and then the Eiffel Tower. As Brainiac flies away from Earth, Superman follows him until Brainiac needs to set down on a nearby planetoid to recharge his batteries. He gets out of his saucer, and that's when Superman uses the opportunity to strike. But Brainiac is protected by a similar force field as his saucer, reflecting Superman's heat vision directly back towards him. Superman tries hurling large, jagged rocks at Brainiac, but they cannot penetrate his defenses. It is clear that Superman is outmatched in both technology and strength. He announces that he has had enough and flees. Even Lois Lane realizes that Superman cannot defeat this new foe as she watches from the rocket. A few moments later, Clark Kent and Lois Lane reunite back on Earth in Metropolis. Brainiac appears again, and he shrinks Metropolis as he did Paris and Rome and New York City. Superman reveals that this was all part of his plan. The only way to get on Brainiac's ship was to feign defeat and wait for him to shrink the entire city. And as Brainiac bottles up Metropolis, Superman attempts to escape the bottle in miniature form, but it's too late. However, Superman still has his powers and is able to remove the metal cork, escape the bottle, and replace it before Brainiac even notices. And as Superman flies around Brainiac's ship, he is mistaken for a fly by Brainiac and Coco, and they attempt to swat him. Superman decides to hide in another uncorked bottle with another shrunken city, but inside that bottle awaits a surprise for Superman. It's the lost city of Kandor, taken from Krypton long ago by Brainiac, well before Superman's birth or Krypton's destruction. Inside, he gets another surprise. His powers do not work because he's back in his home world. And finally, he meets Professor Kimda, an old friend of Superman's father, Jor-El. The Man of Steel explains his history to the Professor, how he came to be on Earth. The Professor, in turn, explains that he has been observing Brainiac and recording the exact sequence of buttons to push to free the multiple trapped cities. Unable to fly or escape, the Professor helps Superman by providing a rocket to reach the cork in the bottle and a rare animal, a mole that eats metal, to help him get through to the other side where Brainiac's controls are waiting. As it turns out, it's the perfect time to attempt an escape. Brainiac has filled all of his bottles. It is a long trip 
back to his home world and he and Coco enter suspended animation for the rest of the journey. It will be a lifetime before Brainiac ever awakens. Executing his plan, Superman is able to escape the bottle containing the city of Kandor, the mole eating through the metal. As he exits the bottle, Superman regains his powers. Using his head, he dive bombs the necessary controls in the necessary sequence to return each city to its proper size and location. But as he goes to restore Kandor, he realizes that there is only enough power to restore either the city or himself. He decides that the city is more important and prepares to sacrifice himself. This is when Professor Kimda flies a rocket into the button that will restore Superman to full size. The professor states that he cannot let Earth go without its greatest hero. Superman picks up the last bottle and leaves Brainiac's ship as it flies away on autopilot. Brainiac none the wiser about what has happened. Superman believes he will never see this alien ever again. And finally, unable to restore the city of Kandor, Superman becomes its caretaker, placing it safely inside the Fortress of Solitude near the North Pole, hoping someday to have the knowledge to restore it and have a piece of his homeworld back for the first time in his life. And that's how it ends, the first appearance of Brainiac, a villain that not only will vex Superman, but the entire Justice League, and even the Legion of Doom. I hope you enjoyed this look back at comic book history, and if you want more comic book recaps and stories, check out my playlist, Welcome to the Comicverse, by clicking on the thumbnail at the end of the video. As always, thank you for watching, and from south of the border, I'm still your reluctant gringo. Salud, and a huevo.